Video two, recovery. We're about to perform a refrigerant recovery on a 2012 Prius. This is video two. The last one was going over some methods of leak testing, not all. I left out using bubbles. Uh, I think everybody can figure out what bubbles is. You squirt bubbly soap water on something and it leaks. I have other videos actually showing that being done. So now we're gonna perform the refrigerant recovery procedure. I already have the tank weighed. The tank weighed already has refrigerant in it. It's 13 kilos and 240 grams. So that's the total weight of the tank with refrigerant in it as it stands right now. I'm only using one hose method right now. As you can see, the high side service port is connected, but there's nothing on it. It's undepressed. You can see the liquid inside my line right there. See the green, you see the water, like what looks like water going around. That's the refrigerant with the dye in it. I am connected down and I have my valve depressed on the low side through one hose going into my machine, going through a filter uh, dryer. This is actually an HH. This is a high moisture content and for acid and stuff for burnouts. So it's going through that filter. This does not make the refrigerant usable or good. This filter is only on there to protect my machine. Plus it helps me clean up the filter a little bit before it goes, clean up the refrigerant a little bit before it goes into my tank. Then the tank takes off to goes off to get processed through a refrigerant uh recycling process this refrigerant is not usable it comes out of many cars with burnt out compressors uh cars that are contaminated heavily with moisture heavily with oils different oils wrong oils different kind of dyes so you would never use this refrigerant again in the shape that it is inside this tank and from here this filter is only to protect my machine and any particulate matter and clean it up a little bit before it gets in it to make the job easier when it goes processed on my other equipment this filter is actually better than any filter that's on any automotive uh, recovery and recycling machine just by itself this filter is better but i'm not counting that filter it has nothing to do with the purity or the cleanness of what's going into here that's not counted it's only to protect my machine Okay, so we're gonna start this machine now. This is the pressure of the refrigerant inside my tank. So this has a pressure transducer taking the pressure going into the tank. This is the pressure sitting, standing right here on my line. And let me make sure that's open. Yes, it's going in, I have, there it goes. So that's the pressure coming through and that's inside my car right now so we're in san francisco it's cool it's in the evening it's like almost nine o'clock the vehicle really hasn't been running much if it was a hot day and running this pressure would be higher so now we're going to start the procedure come on there it goes now it just kicked on the other two fans this has three fans they blow up, they're like big server fans. They really blow really hard and they move a lot of air. And as you can see, I wanna slow that down a little bit. It took the pressure down quite a bit and it's slowly lowering it. So I'm taking refrigerant out of my vehicle and you can actually see it moving and bubbling out of the high side. I'm not taking it out of the high side. I'm taking it all out of the low side. So this is the refrigerant that is being pulled to the low side through the condenser from the compressor, going up through the expansion valve, through the evaporator, coming down the low side and coming up through this low side service port and being pulled out. So you actually got to see that bubble out of there as they remove it. Now you see nothing in there because there's only vapor left. There's no liquid being pulled up through the bottom of the condenser 
where it gets subcooled up this liquid line and past that sight glass. See a little oil down in there. But that's about it. So we're still pulling down. Get up a little bit more. I'm going slower on this so I, so I can show you the sight glass. I want to show this to you without making this such a fast process that I would have missed the sight glass. Because usually if I have that up full, I can pull it down within 60 to 120 seconds. There'd be nothing left and I, there'd be nothing for me to do a video on. So let me uh, speed it up a little bit more. See if I could get anything to show for you. That open the paper more. Ah, there we go. Now I got some flashing. So I want to catch this and let for those of you who have never seen this process. I just didn't have it open enough. I'm trying to do it slow enough so I could show you something but fast enough that I could get this done in a timely manner. Okay, at the pressure transducer in here, it's measuring 15, 16 negative vacuum on the suction sign. So this refrigerant is coming down, it's going through and going into the machine. It's going through the condenser, it's getting condensed condensating back into a liquid and the pump is pumping it back out and pushing it into the tank and as you see it slowed down again speed it up some more. I just pop it up a little bit more there it goes now this is starting to look like something you would see when the, the AC is running and you would see your system really low on refrigerant. It would look like this if the compressor was running. So the, now remember on, on another video when I fill this up, you'll see this get, the, get filled up and you'll see what it looks like. Okay, now you're starting to see some refrigerant boil off there. Boom, it just flashed. Okay, let me uh, open it up a little bit more. Faster, okay, now I have it completely opened up. And we're on full, I'm on vapor, it's going. So, I'll just let that go for a few minutes. And I don't think you want to watch this whole video while it goes, while I um, pull this sucker down. Cause I'm not doing, I'm not opening it up to the high side. And actually what I'm gonna do before I do a vacuum, this vacuum pump is gonna go on the low side. I am going to take and read the vacuum off the high side using this micron gauge so you will see a very accurate vacuum uh, be taken down and i'll use the software for this that you'll read on the screen and over time on a graph we'll actually be able to see the vacuum go down so that'll be the next thing i hook up on video number three is vacuum and the vacuum will get hooked to this high side line and then i'll screw down the service port and we'll see, I'll draw vacuum from the low side, but I'll read the vacuum on the high side. Because if I read the vacuum through a pair of gauges, that is actually a false vacuum reading. And if I read it at a vacuum pump, like this vacuum pump here actually has a digital display and it'll read vacuum at the pump, that won't really be a true indicator of what the vacuum is deep inside the system back at the condenser or inside the evaporator. That's where you want to get the vacuum deep. It doesn't matter what your vacuum says out here. It's what the vacuum is inside your system. 
So this is why we're gonna do a one hose recovery, a one hose vacuum, and a one hose recharge system on this whole thing using no gauges. It's all gonna be through one single hose. So this will get set up with the software that will monitor, track over time, and you will actually see the vacuum going down in the system, not at the hoses. So that will be in video number three, vacuum process and vacuum recording, actually data logging the vacuum. All right, so we're at a negative 25 vacuum right now in the system just performing a recovery so let's do a purge so right now it's purging out refrigerant from the machine to get all the liquid out push it into the tank so i could read so i could read what comes out 340, 345, and this vehicle, 420 is what I'm going for, because that's what I filled it up to a couple years ago with 420. We're almost there. Oh, we hit 400. So, I know it was over two years. I barely lost anything. about an ounce after about two years an ounce maybe a little bit more um, 28 grams is one ounce so I know I, I did 420 and probably a little hair more I'm I do that to myself a little bit another 10 grams or so but I would put that down into unmeasurable and my lack of cooling that I was getting that I started noticing was due to my air filter because I have an air filter that looks like this now this was one of those charcoal air filters so it was gray to start with but this the air conditioning on my car never gets turned off it turns on in the morning 6 30 to 7 30 a.m. and it doesn't turn off it stays running and idling all day with the air conditioning running and it doesn't get turned off until the evening 6 30 to 7 30 p.m so it usually has a 12 hour day without being turned off and we're down to a 29 vacuum we're just hitting roughly a 29 vacuum so I'm going to put it in the closed position and that will close off the valving from this half of the liquid going into the tank to the side going into the car. And then we'll bleed down. I'll let that sit for several minutes. But right now, let's see. Okay, there we go a little kick up valve there's a valve that just kicked on and just purged back this is not 30 psi inside that system that was something that just purged within the unit so i'll turn it back on back on and this is where having the gauges because usually I would close it at the gauges and then I'd be totally isolated from the machine but I already know how the machine works so I don't have to look at gauges to do this I just know when I'm this low I'm, I'm good to go get it back down to 29 again Purge it. So now the machine is there it goes, cleaning out the machine. Okay, 
and I went back and recovered a little a little extra that was in the system from that stock 420 and that's from several years ago oh not several about two years ago a little over two years ago I recharged it so my system's good actually I lost more refrigerant the first two times I did it this time I did very good 420 420 a little bit of loss most everybody says my air conditioning works really good but I can actually feel the loss of flow from this air filter and actually I'll show you how to measure the loss of flow using a mammo, uh, mammometer or uh, an airflow meter we'll actually swap out a new filter for this used filter and measure the flow of air coming out of the dash that'll be another video I'll make I'll hold on to this I won't throw it away We'll make another video using a mammometer and we'll use a airflow meter to actually show you the difference of airflow caused by a bad air filter. Yeah, can't argue about that when you get vacuum down that low just by using a recovery machine. This is in, not even the vacuum pump. This is just a recovery machine. So I'll catch you on the next one. We'll have a vacuum recording session. We'll data log it using the BlueVac Pro and the software, and you can watch the vacuum go down. And in 30 years of doing recoveries, almost 1992 was the first year I had to start you because of the EPA. Uh, this has been the best vacuum machine I have ever used and I've owned probably about eight different manufacturers vacuum machines and some of them I've owned several vacuum machines I actually broke so many of them in the first year because they were made they weren't made very good uh, back 30 years ago almost so they would break often because I would actually do tonnage of refrigerant recovery not poundage I actually went to scrap yards uh, auto uh, dismantling yards and I used to recover refrigerant out of cars out of scrap yards and uh, burn up machines while I was recovering refrigerant. So see you guys on the next video.